Welcome to Kentuckiana Real Talk, hosted by Jeremy Ward. If you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe on the podcast provider of your choice and consider subscribing to the Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel for more expert real estate insights. Now, let's start the show. Hello, welcome to Kentucky and a Real Talk. Today, I have the pleasure to interview Miss Tammy Persinger <laughs> with Jeremy Ward Team and in Ward Realty Services. Tammy, I guess you've been with us about five years. We were talking about it. You came aboard as soon as we opened. Yes. Now, we had some history together. We both worked at a, um, a Remax uh, brokerage there yeah. together for years and become friends. Mm-hmm. And it's been a good ride. Yeah, but, yeah, we were on different teams, but right next to each other. So got to know each other a little bit. And then uh, things happened with my team and... Uh, we had conversations and, and, uh, then I decided that the best place for me to be was with Ward Realty Services and for the last, well, now almost six years, right. it has been the best thing for me. Well, you've been a blessing to our company for I sure. Just it. your heart and your work and your drive. Like, <laughs> I don't see how, uh, how you do it with the grandkids and keeping up with everything. <laughs> now you're telling how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. I've got grandkids. That's true. <laughs> I probably got more gray hair than you, so there you go. At the present, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you been up to, Tammy? Uh, just uh, working hard, uh, doing some, I've had some closings here lately. I've had a lot of people say, it seems like they're asking, well, what's business like and what's going on? And and uh, truthfully, yeah, I mean, the interest rates kind of put a little, a little nudge in us, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, that happened, but those of us that have been in the business for a while came up with ideas on how to get around that. And we work with some fantastic lenders uh, that have given us plans on how to get around that and uh, make uh, properties more affordable. And uh, then, you know, the holidays, we get into the holidays and people are all caught up with that. And and I am too. That's fine. So things slow down a little bit this time of year, sure. but but we're ready to rip into it for 2024. So get going again. Yeah, it's been an extremely good year on the team. And I'm excited to see what you guys can accomplish next year in 2024. You know, it's going to be an election year. And mm-hmm. I feel like they're probably going to lower rates down as much as they can. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you said, we're getting people in these homes at five, five and a half percent right now. So it's not all bad. Yeah. Uh, I think this is probably an opportunity for people out there that want to buy mm-hmm. to maybe take advantage of some sellers that are a little bit scared, mm-hmm. uh, even though we know it's on paper, it's a seller's market, mm-hmm. right? But as out on the, you're out in the field and you're working mm-hmm. with these people and you see these higher end homes, right? they're going to sit there a little bit longer. Uh, yeah. it, it takes a little longer, but it's not a dead market mm-hmm. by no means. Well, and, and, you know, and it comes back to the work that the seller wants to do to, to get that property sold and what, how hard the agent is going to work on it. I mean, I've got my own personal home uh, that has been sitting there for a little while. And so I decided to take it off the market and I've done some things to it, uh, still continue to do some things to it. And uh, I'm planning on putting it back on the market. I haven't quite decided if it's going to be prior to Christmas or right after Christmas, but hit it hard and, and get the marketing out there on it and do a lot of open houses and um you know it'll be a great opportunity to uh, for somebody to own a beautiful home in champions point that sits right there on the 18th so i was gonna ask you what hole you were on yeah i'm I, my house backs up to the 18th t box and so we we always had a lot of fun sitting there <laughs> uh listening to the golfers try to figure out how to play that hole and <laughs> giving them a little advice if they asked and uh then also playing the course ourselves so it was uh, it was fun, and that was a good part of my life. But now I've moved and and have that one up for sale for somebody else to come in and enjoy. So part of your background, Tammy, that a lot you know you've got a lot of background. You've been a, a school teacher. Yes. Um, of course, you've been a mom, your grandma, mm-hmm. been a wife. You've done all those things, uh, but you're also an investor, mm-hmm. and you've done a lot of flips and rentals. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us a little bit about your current project. That's actually going to be your personal home. Yes. Uh, some of the stuff you've you've done with it. Now that is an uh, antique or a 
historical district? Yes, I am in the historical district on East Main in New Albany. And so, and, and uh, it has been uh, fun and frustrating at times, but uh, it's it's been a good project to keep me busy and out of trouble. Uh, but I have uh, done some remodeling in the home, uh, new roof, new electrical, new paint, uh, exterior paint, uh, a lot of interior paint, totally redone the master bathroom, um, uh, did some work on the basement. Uh, now I'm adding an addition on the back of the house. It's going to be a Four Seasons room for me to just hang out in and relax. And uh, let's see, I also did some work on the kitchen uh, and uh, just some cosmetic things there. And then I'm also in the process of adding a garage um, and then uh, landscaping. So I moved in there in June. And <laughs> so I've been pretty busy with all of that. But, uh, you know, I, again, it, it pays to know good people and good contractors and you can get people in there to help you with that. And, and I've been fortunate to know a lot of good contractors and feel like that's something that I can bring to the real estate market too, right. because I have people say to me, you know, well, do you know a good electrician? Do you know somebody that can come in and build this deck? Do you know a roofer? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and those of us that have done work like that, uh, in, in the past or right now, we know those people. So Yeah, it's one thing to watch HGTV and say, I can do that. <laughs> but it's another yeah. to actually live it more than once or twice and actually have the experience to help others on their way mm -hmm. through that process. You can save them a lot of speed bumps, a lot yeah. of hurdles. Uh, I know one of the other things that really drives you, Tammy, uh, and maybe this comes from being a school teacher and helping and teaching so you know for so long, but you really love, I've, I've heard you say it so many times, you love first time home buyers and helping those what you call kids yeah. uh, on their way. Well, so sometimes they're not kids, but uh, but most of the time it's a younger buyer and uh, they just everything about it. I love uh, from sitting down there with them initially. And uh, like you said, the, the teaching comes into it. So being able to go through the whole process with them and it's uh, teacher, counselor, uh, therapist, right. uh, whatever else it, it, it brings uh, in and, and uh, helping them to go through the process with the lender, uh, going through everything with inspections and what they need to be looking for. I, I love it when they'll bring in, and I, I always tell them it's good to have another set of eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think that when I was in my 20s, I knew everything, but no, <laughs> I did not. Um, and so, you know, a lot of, a lot of first-time home buyers will bring in, you know, their uncle that's been a contractor or mom and dad or grandparents, and they want to take a look at things too. And, and I enjoy working with them and talking sure. to them. And I will go through and, and I'll be very honest, you know, they may walk into a home and absolutely love the house, but I've been through enough with building houses and flipping houses and having rental houses and buying and selling houses over the years that I'll point out things that could potentially be an issue, mm -hmm. uh, something that's going to cost them a lot of money, and they don't have that money. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I have a lot of parents and grandparents say, thanks for taking care of our kids. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I enjoy going through that process. And they are so, so excited when mm -hmm. we get to the closing table. And yeah. it's, it's just a big event. It is. It's, you know, it's their first home. It's the American dream. And you get to be a part of that and experience yeah. it with them. And like you said, hopefully save them a, a few bucks along the way and, and stuff that they could be spending money. If nobody pointed it out to them, they just don't know. But if right. you can save them a thousand bucks by looking at a house and saying, this is going to be an issue, mm -hmm. they can make that choice right then where they want to spend mm -hmm. that thousand bucks and see how bad it is. Right. Or, you know what? I think let's go to the next one, Tammy. Yeah. We need to look around. And, and I've heard that, you know, that uh, even people I deal with, I do the same thing. I'm like, you know, yeah, I see all the good stuff, but are, mm -hmm. are you seeing this and this and this? And, and yeah. it makes a difference. And unfortunately, I mean, you know, I, our business is a sales business and we don't get paid until we get to the closing table and get that commission. And there are a lot of agents out there, unfortunately, that uh, look at it like, well, I've got to get the sale, got to get the sale. And I'm in a position that, you know, being a, a little bit older than than uh, uh, some agents and uh, a lot of agents uh, and uh, having been in the business for a while and and that I can 
slow it down a little bit for people. And now it's, I'm enjoying this part because it has slowed down. A couple of years ago, you know, selling 40, 45 houses a year and it was just bam, bam, bam. And as soon as you would walk in, you had to make a decision. We don't have time to look at anything else. If this is the house that you want, then okay, let's write a contract on it. You get that contract written, oh, highest and best. Now what are we going to have to do and the strategies for that? And so now it's a little bit more relaxed that the buyer can go in and they can look at the home and they may actually have an opportunity to go back and look at it again mm -hmm. or say, okay, we want to we want to have dinner and think about it. Uh, a couple of years ago, they could couldn't even go have dinner and think about it. It was when we leave the house, let's go ahead and write the contract. Um, that was that was great for my business because I was making good money. Sure. At, but at the same time, it was very, very hectic. And uh, uh, it, sometimes you, you feel like you're not uh, giving adequate service to every one of your clients. And we want to do that. Yes. You yes. know, our team strives to do that. We want to be the full service agents that are there from beginning to end and then still keep in touch afterwards. Be too. a friend in the business. I right. mean, I, I, you probably heard me say at a team meeting, like, guys, you're, you're selling them this place. Mm -hmm. And if you've done a good job, they're going to use you again oh, yes. to resell it. So make sure you're setting them up and quite honestly yourself mm -hmm. for a win when they resell it. Because if you mm -hmm. sell them a piece of crap mm -hmm. because they've had to do multiple offers and all these right. things. You're gonna, it's gonna be your problem when you go to resell it. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna be a piece of crap, or they've dumped so much money into it, they can't sell it. So, I mean, I hate it. I, I take it personally, and I hate it when I have a buyer call me a couple months after they've been in the house and it's like, well, the furnace went out. What do I do? Well, you know, you didn't wanna get a home warranty. Uh, that was something that was brought up in the inspection, uh, but you take a chance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I also advise every buyer, but especially new buyers, um, you know, you don't want to be, my mom used to call it house poor, uh, <laughs> where you're yeah. pumping every dime that you have into your house. You can't go and buy a new car. You can't uh, go on a vacation. You're just killing yourself trying to keep up with the house and things are going to happen. Yeah. You know, the furnace is going to go out. The water heater is going to flood your basement. The, you know, the roof is going to fly off because of a bad storm. Um, things happen it to happens. houses and you have to have some money set aside for that and be prepared for those things. Yeah. And it usually happens in the most, just the worst time. Mm -hmm. It's usually, with, you know, multiples and, and we see that. And But the good thing is, is they reach out to us and, mm -hmm. and there again, you can send them, hey, call this guy, call right. this company. You know, they'll, they'll take good care of you. They'll get right. it done Right. right. Uh, you know, we, you were talking about, you know, uh, your mom and she was an investor and I, I've never got to meet your mom, but I heard plenty of stories, but she mm -hmm. was, uh, she was at the auction. She was written, she was buying, she was doing it. So it's in your blood. Yeah. And, uh, I heard you talk about, you know, house poor. And, and one thing my dad always said, he's like, people will spend money they don't have mm -hmm. to impress people they don't even know. That's true. And that's not the position we want our clients in. That's true. Like we want them to get their, their, their best bang for the buck. Right. And the house that they want. And this house may be great, but do you have the money to put any furniture in it? <laughs> so and, no that's, that's another thing. You know, it's not fun sleeping on a futon for very long, and it's not fun sitting in lawn chairs in your living room. So, yeah. um, you know, so they have to think about that. And and as a mom and a grandma and a former teacher, I point those things out to kids and say, you know, this is the, this is realistically what happens. what happens. And I mean, in, in my case, I was remodeling my kitchen and all of a sudden my microwave started going crazy. And I loved the microwave that was in my house. Uh, it was older, but it was a great microwave, had all kinds of really cool features on it and everything. And, but it would work one day and it didn't the next day. So guess what? I had to go out and I wanted one like it. So I had to pay dearly to have one like that put right. in my house. And I didn't <clears throat> expect to spend that. I think it was about $700 on that microwave that I wanted. Uh, I didn't expect to spend it right then, but Smart that's what enough. I had to do, you know? So Tammy, you're not only working in Indiana, 
but you're also licensed in Kentucky. Do you yes. do a fair bit of, of work over there. Yeah, I, uh, depending, I mean, for a couple of years there, I would say it was probably about a third of my business this year. It's been down a little bit. Um, but, you know, that a lot of what has happened this year with me has been personal things yeah. and changes in my life. Um, and so I haven't, I haven't worked as hard <laughs> as I had in the past. Um, I, I take care of my clients and, uh, I do what I need to do and, and enjoy what I do. Um, but I haven't been out there just, you know, wreaking havoc all across <laughs> Indiana and Kentucky like I was for a while. Um, but no, I, I enjoy doing business in Kentucky. The the forms uh, are all, of course, different. Mm -hmm. uh, the way that they do things uh, is different from Indiana in a lot of ways. But uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. And uh, I like when other agents at our office decide that they want to get that Kentucky license yes. and I'll, I'll help them with the forms and how to do this and how to do that. And, and uh, it makes it better for all of us. Yeah. I mean, especially for the client, I mean, you can imagine that there's really just a river in between mm -hmm. us. It's, it's right. the metropolitan area. It's, you know, but not having to work with two different agents mm -hmm. where they can call you and that you can list their house mm -hmm. in Kentucky, sell them mm -hmm. something in Indiana or, or vice versa. Right. And, and you know everything that's going on with both. So mm -hmm. there's better communication. It's mm -hmm. just the, the best way to go. Yeah. Uh, we've had instances where, you know, you've got a Kentucky agent and they're, they're, they're selling the house in Kentucky and then they've got a buyer's agent in Indiana and then there, and there's just no communication mm -hmm. and it's weird. I always say, if you can get one agent to do them both, that you're, mm -hmm. it's a much smoother ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a huge plus that you can do that for your clients. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you know, whatever, whatever is going to be best. And, but we have a lot of people that are moving into the area now. Mm -hmm. It's not just people between Indiana and Kentucky. We have a lot of clients that are moving here from California, I guess, because they're tired of dealing with all of the great things that happen in the state of California. Uh, and then Texas, Arizona, Florida, uh, you know, we have people that are moving in here from all over because they find out that the economy right here in our part of the world is fantastic. Uh, they can buy buy a much bigger property mm -hmm. than they could anyplace else. And uh, so they move in here and they don't care if it's Kentucky or Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll look both sides of the river and uh, just to find the right place. You know, we're in a very affordable place to live. We in are. The Midwest. I mean, I don't, I joke with people all the time. I'm like, where could I go to retire that would be any cheaper than where I'm at? You know, I could get a better, maybe you know, tropical uh, environment, mm -hmm. but I can't find anything any cheaper unless I go south of the border. Right. And it's not quite safe down there to, <laughs> for, for me to go down there with my family to live. But uh, I was talking to uh, uh, one of our family members, his family's from Mexico, and he, I said, so, you know, what What do you guys do down there as far as like buying farms and stuff? He said, well, we can buy them. He said, but the cartel just kicks you off of them. Wow. And it's that bad. For these people, you know, and, and so I see why they're coming up here, right. you know, and it's the American it, dream. It's the American dream. And, and we have some freedoms that we sometimes don't realize we even have. I know. But uh, we live in a great area here in southern Indiana and in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we've been blessed to be here in this mm -hmm. business. I think last I checked, it's been probably six months, but we were like the number three housing market in the United States in the metropolitan area. It doesn't surprise and, me at all. That's a blessing, mm -hmm. you know, to be in this area and be able to, because I have friends in these higher end markets that are starving right now. Mm -hmm. The money's just not flowing. They're right. just not spending it with the higher interest rates. So Tammy, what was one of the most rem memorable, funny, touching stories that you can think about in your, your career real estate? <laughs> I'm saying you have a few. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, we, 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 were, we were talking, we were talking <laughs> about Kentucky. I can remember one time I had a buyer that wanted to see this farm in Kentucky and, and I keep driving and driving and driving and the GPS is dropping me and, and I'm like, okay, I've got to be somewhere close to this. And so uh, after turning around a couple times and stopping and asking people that were in their yard, am I close? And <laughs> uh, finally find this place. There's a huge tree down across the driveway. So I can't even drive back to the house. And uh, I'm walking back and it's all grown up and I can see this old farmhouse in the distance. And I started hearing banjos. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I think a lot of realtors have experienced that in their past where it's all of a sudden you're thinking, this might not be the best place for me. Uh, and uh, I got there and looked around the property and and uh, the buyer came and was there all of about 10 minutes and said, I just don't think this is going to be for us. Uh, so that was a long drive and a lot of time out of my day, but uh, we ended up finding them the right house. So they were, they were, they were good after all. But um, yeah, there are stories like that, that are, there are stories of walking into houses and finding people living in the houses that you didn't <laughs> expect to have living in the house at that time. They weren't exactly there legally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you just, you have to be safe and you have to be cautious about these things. I've got um, I've got one particular client that uh, she and I both, um, she's looking for uh, a historical home like mine. And uh, we have gone into many old houses together and we both will get this feeling that there's something going on in that house. There is a presence of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she has even gotten pictures a couple times. Uh, and so we laugh about that. So, you know, it's kind of uh, when you get into old houses, but I'm I'm a person that that kind of thing really doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I'll go down into the nastiest, darkest, worst cellars and with all the cobwebs and everything. And that's just part of my business so of, you know and and a lot of people are like no I'm not going down there but <laughs> I don't I don't care uh as long as I'm I'm dressed that I can get down in there and I try to do that so I know that I can get there but uh climb up in attics and and down in cellars and out, walk out the property and no matter how big the property is walk the property with the buyer so it's fun it's adventuresome mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh some it, it's uh it's nothing like you see on HGTV. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> so I love how, you know, they'll show them three houses. They make their decision. And of course, they get it at a great price. Oh, yeah. And uh, so, but no, it's it, our, our business is not like that. We have to work a little bit harder for our money. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a nonstop mm -hmm. work, almost like being on a hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And you run, 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 run. And, Every once in a while, you try to take a break, mm -hmm. but then you're blessed with another buyer seller that calls you and says, no, no break. Uh -huh, Come see me. <laughs> uh -huh. It might be three o'clock in the morning, too, yeah. because they work third shift. And so they think, oh, I need to call Tammy and ask her this question. So, um, but not saying for anybody to do that in the future, <laughs> uh, but, but I have had it happen and I've answered my phone and taken care of it. Um, but no, it's, it's, um, it's. An exciting business to be in. Uh, it's a rewarding business to be in. Um, I think a lot of people think, well, you know, these realtors make a whole ton of money and everything. Well, honestly, after you've been in the business for a while and you work hard, yeah, you make a good amount of money. Uh, but I usually tell people when they're thinking about getting into it, do like I did and don't quit your day job. Right. Uh, I kept teaching for five years. Uh, until I was pretty well settled in real estate and, and found that I was making more as a realtor than I was at the top of the pay scale teaching. Mm -hmm. And I was in, at that point in time enjoying it a lot more. Uh, so I broke it to my husband that, guess what? Something's got to go. And I, I think I know what it's going to be. And, and I miss the kids. Sure. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of stress in teaching and that uh, I've gotten rid of <laughs> now. But uh, no, I, I, I've enjoyed every part of it, whether it's investing in real estate, whether it is flipping houses, uh, having rental houses, selling real estate, uh, building, every part of it. Uh, it it's, been, it's been enjoyable. It's been hectic. Um, there are times that some words come out of my mouth that I should not say right here. Uh, <laughs> Like this morning when I found out my windows weren't going to come in until February 2nd uh, <laughs> that I've been waiting for since July. Uh, so, but, you know, it, 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 it's been an experience and it's very different. I tell people all the time, it is the business world. Mm -hmm. And I was not, as a teacher, ever a part of the business world. So I didn't, I didn't realize uh, that I could be 
pretty good mm -hmm. in, in this world. And uh, it was very different from what I had been used to. So, um, but I, you know, it, it's, it's good to work with people and see that you're appreciated for what you do uh, to get those comments from them and, and uh, the referrals from them. And that, that means a lot. Yeah. And, and it means a lot when you work for somebody like you, Jeremy, uh -oh. that, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a suck up part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but no, honestly, not sucking up at all. I tell Jeremy this all the time and, and everybody in our in our office does. It makes such a huge difference to have somebody that is there that knows the business as well as you do and has our backs and you want us to succeed. Even at your expense, sometimes sure. you push us to succeed. And that's huge. That yeah. is just huge. Well, it comes from. I, I worked in blue collar uh, most of my life and uh, always thought there was something different. I didn't think people should be treated that way. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I didn't like being just a number. So it's, it's very important to me that my people feel like more than a number, more mm -hmm. than a, you know, how many sales can Tammy do this year? Like mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a relationship business all the way around. It is. Like you, your clients and you, your your contractors, you and I as broker to broker, mm -hmm. it's a relationship business and you got to have people around it. That, that you can trust, mm -hmm. that you know that I have your back. And it's the same way. I know I can call you and you'll have my back. Mm -hmm. If I need something, Tammy's going to be there, mm -hmm. you know, and it's having that right group of people. And it's nothing that I've done. I've just been blessed having the right people around me. Mm -hmm. And we have got one heck of a good bunch of people around us. Yes, we do. And the numbers are showing that, it, you know, a team that can work together and not argue mm -hmm. and not uh, work and against play, each other. And we play together too. And, we play, <laughs> and we're competitive. <laughs> we are competitive. We are. It's killed it's me. It really killed me this year, not being number one. But, you know, at the same time, you had some great people that joined the company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they have just marched in there and done a fantastic job. And we are competitive with each other. And yes, I watch those numbers all the time. Uh, but at the same time, it's also a company where we cheer each other on too. We all win. And, you know, we all do win. Uh, we each, each and every person has to, has to come together and do the right things. And then it makes it all better for all of us. Yeah. We all got, you know, we got our own separate goals, but at the end of the day, we're a team mm -hmm. and we're, we're for the better of the team and the team's clients. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, very blessed that everybody from top to bottom feels that way. Mm -hmm. um, and if they haven't, they haven't told me any difference. <laughs> um, but Tammy, you're, uh, I mean, I see it every day. You love what you do mm -hmm. and you, you're all in. And so if somebody, if you're looking for a realtor that can work on both sides of the river, <laughs> that's got experience in all these areas that Tammy's mentioned from flipping to renting, to restoring historical houses, mm -hmm. to knowing the contractors and who to call, Tammy's your girl. Tammy, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, my direct number is 502-489-4445. Or you can reach me at Tammy. That's T-A-M-M-Y. It's the old spelling because I was born in the 60s. Uh, T-A-M-M-Y at JeremyWardTeam.com. Tammy, I appreciate you coming on and sharing with us uh, today. For more local real estate information, please like and subscribe to Jeremy Ward Team YouTube channel.